Kimberly Petty, the certified campus hunch of University of Brightchester, actually offered some sage advice to our heir, Rosalie Bastianich, who would have thought she had opinions on anything else but woohoo. Rosalie Bastianich's first term of college at the University of Brightchester had officially come to an end. It was now summer break, a break that Rosalie intended on enjoying to the fullest. And having Kimberly by her side at her Windenburg home was just the cherry to be popped. I mean, cherry on top. Prior to heading to the airport, Rosalie got on the phone, begging her mother, our founder Gwyneth Westwood, to buy her friend Kimberly a ticket. She told her everything about Kimberly's situation, putting emphasis on her terrible childhood and housing situation. Eventually, Gwyneth gave in, but she wasn't super happy about it. She at least hoped that Kimberly would be someone she would like. I don't don't exactly know about that one Gwynny. Before heading inside, Rosalie went over the house rules, her family members, and the do's and do notes when it comes to her mother Gwyneth. She loves her, but that sitch has problems, like mother, like daughter. All members of the Westwood Stallings household waited patiently for Rosalie's arrival. Gwyneth couldn't contain her excitement as her firstborn walked through the door and into her arms. Rosalie, her baby, she missed her so much, she couldn't believe she was fine finally back here, there wasn't a day Gwyneth didn't miss her. And that's when Kimmy introduced herself to Gwyneth, giving her a respectful bow. And as Rosalie went around the living room to greet good family friend Tanisha and her baby sister Bella, Kimmy couldn't help but think to herself, Damn, this sit is hot. Absolutely not, Kimmy. Absolutely not. Rosalie felt so good being back home and back with absolutely no academic weight left on her shoulders. This was gonna be a good summer. She just knew it. Once she settled in, Kimmy Kimmy decided to go on a run and explore the affluent neighborhood of Crumbling Isle, Windenburg. That was when Gwyneth decided to take Rosalie outside for a little one-on-one -on -one time with her daughter, and Bella is back to being a miserable sitch to her mother. Did she just zap Tonisha's mind? I should have zapped you out of Gwyneth's womb. Gwyneth wanted to know absolutely everything there was to know about Rosalie's first term of university after she knew everything about Kimmy. Well, Rosalie began, she's the first real friend she made at Brightchester, they're in the same dorm, and next term, they were considering getting a dorm together, she's a lot of fun, unserious, unhinged, even, but really nice and smart. She was really grateful they were taking her in for the summer, Rosalie couldn't imagine being in her position, although Gwyneth wasn't stoked that she was going to have another mouth to feed for a while. Rosalie seemed happy, and that was all that mattered. Her happiness was all Gwyneth cared about, but unlike Rosalie, her other daughter Bella was nowhere near being happy right now. Fucking Kendra Smith. She couldn't believe that Sitch had the nerve to kiss her on the lips with tongue. After all those years of vicious taunts and bullying, where did she get the nerve? What possessed her to think Bella would kiss her back? Bella had been glued to her computer for the past several weeks, avoiding most of the family Rosalie had learned. She came upstairs with Tanisha to check on her, Bella responding with the same exact phrase, to get the hell out of her room. Sorry, Rosalie said, she was going to have to try harder than that. Unlike her moms, she wasn't scared of her baby sister, they haven't seen each other in so long, and they didn't exactly leave off in a good place. Rosalie wanted to know what was up, and she wasn't leaving this room room until she tells her. But Bella didn't tell her anything. All Bella could do was cry and tell her sister once again to get the hell out of her room. Fine, she said, agreeing to leave her room, but she'd better get her act together before she comes back home in the morning. She was going to be out all night with Kimberly. Rosalie agreed to show Kimberly around Windenburg and its surrounding cities over their break, and they wasted no time hitting up one of Rosalie's favorite clubs. She'd come here with Thinley once and had been aching to go back. Kimmy could not wait. She'd gone 
gone a whole three days without woohoo and felt like she was going to die. She was scoring someone tonight. Rosalie was not the least bit surprised about Kimmy's hotivities, but that's what a night on the town was for. Meeting people, letting loose, getting pissed drunk. Rosalie was planning on doing all of that tonight. It didn't take long for Kimmy to fix her eyes on a guy who was staring her down. My god, that man is ugly. Your taste is rancid, my girl. But it wasn't exactly his looks that Kimmy was drawn in by. It was what she saw poking out from him. She could spot that thing from a mile away. Rosalie was too entranced by the music to even notice. This is just what she needed after the stressful past few days she'd been having. To let go, to feel free, to wear a skimpy dress her simusi could breathe in, shake that thang, and put her hands in the air like she just didn't care. She felt euphoric. But you know what would make her feel even better? A cold, refreshing drink. Looks like Kimmy and her newest conquest are having a lot of fun at a corner of the club. Rosalie got herself a delicious blue Hawaiian, guzzling it down as she listened to the blaring EDM music playing on the club stereos. Eventually, she managed to remember that she came here with Kimmy, scouring the club for her and finding her chatting with her new flavor of the night. She could see that things were getting extremely steamy between the pair. She introduced herself, learning that his name was Matt. They are auto automatically good friends. So now I have to see this culture appropriating man pop up at the house from time to time. She got herself a second blue Hawaiian, sitting back down at the table only to learn that rolling pin face from university was here. Wow, it's slim pickings in this club when it comes to the guys, ain't it? Not rolling pin asking Kimmy to butter her biscuit. This is a great example of why you don't give ugly guys a chance. However, that did remind her of tonight's mission. Ask asking Matt if he wanted to go find a more private place to hang out. Right in front of Rolling Pin, poor Rolling Pin. Rosalie got herself to more drinks during the duration of Kimmy's escapade. I'm sorry, what? Rosalie gained the bro trait. We made so many improvements after what went down with Jacorn Scruggs. Are we regressing and becoming a pick me once again? Meanwhile, the sun was rising, and that meant that Bella Westwood would be heading for school. She was still in a terrible mood. And by the looks of it, so was Kendra Smith. What does she even call Kendra now? Is she still her enemy, acquaintance? She honestly didn't know, and it was all she could think about. Well, that, and one more thing, the real reason why she had been upstairs on her computer for the past couple of weeks. The kiss that Bella shared with Kendra made her confused, since boys never really showed an interest in her. Bella never really contemplated them, nor her sexuality. She just always assumed she was straight. But even though Kendra was a terrible, awful, disgusting, tragic little creature embodying a tiny teenage girl, she found the kiss with her exhilarating. Her hair smelled like flowers and fresh raindrops. Her lips tasted like cotton candy and were as soft as velvet. Did she enjoy her kiss with Kendra? Did she like girls? She stayed up for hours researching all about sexuality on her computer. There were so many, she couldn't keep track. She still didn't know if she liked girls or not as she walked to her first class, pretending to not even notice Kendra sitting right at front. She certainly had noticed her all right, and how sad she seemed. It was pitiful. But before, she used to feel giddy seeing Kendra all nervous and depressed. Today, for the first time, ever. She felt sorry for her. What the hell was happening to Bella? Where had her hatred for Kendra gone? Where was the reasoning and logic? Enjoying a kiss was one thing, liking girls was another. But the real question that terrified her was, did she like Kendra back? She was so sick at the thought of it that she spent her lunch alone, sitting outside on the football field. This is so dramatic, LMAO. She hated Kendra so much right now. Bella was so confused, so anxious, so annoyed. She was ready to get on with graduation, leaving this dumpster of a school and everybody in it behind for good. Now, she has these awkward feelings to worry about, well, her feelings. And someone else. What did she want now? She told Kendra to leave her alone. That she didn't want to talk to her or even look at her right now. But Kendra wasn't going anywhere. Not until they hash their issues out once and for all. You're asking to get cussed out. Oh.
Papa, no! I told you so. Kendra was sorry about everything, about bullying her, about the kiss. Whatever it was Bella was mad about, she didn't have to like her back. But she really didn't want the two of them to be enemies anymore. And she'd really appreciate her thoughts. But unlike Kendra, Bella was in no mood to talk, giving her the silent treatment. Well, fine, Kendra said. She guessed she'll just have to stay right here until Bella says something. She looked so pretty today, Kendra said. Okay, Bella has had enough. Calling her pretty won't make her forgive her. Kissing her abruptly in a fit of passion also won't make her forgive her. As far as Bella was concerned, Kendra was unforgivable. And maybe, just maybe, instead of preoccupying herself with a future where the two of them could be friends or lovers, she should take herself to therapy for that little secret involving the police officer. Kendra really didn't know what to do or say in that moment. All she could do was run back to class ashamed. Once the bell rung, <coughs> truth be told, Bella didn't feel good at all after saying that to Kendra. It was probably the cruelest thing she'd ever done, but she just wanted to be left alone. How else could she achieve that? Once Bella got back home, she rushed immediately back upstairs and into her room. But she wasn't going to be up there for long. Tonight, the whole household was going out to dinner together at an upscale Oasis Springs restaurant in celebration of Rosalie's return home. It was also a special occasion. Bella had already found out the truth about what was going on between Gwyneth and Tanisha. But Rosalie still hadn't known a thing. So tonight, Gwyneth would finally be telling her everything, including her plans for their wedding. They would be eloping in Tartosa in just three short days. Hopefully, Rosalie won't be upset with her for keeping this secret for so long. Kimberly was overwhelmed by the opulence of this restaurant. And then, the menu. Caviar, Wagyu steak, white truffles. Everything sounded divine. Gwyneth could tell Kimmy was extremely appreciative of this, and she made sure to let Gwyneth know that. Flirting with her in front of the whole family. Where is the decorum? At least Tanisha didn't see it. Kimmy was getting to know her new crush better while Rosalie caught up on all things college and Findlay related with Tanisha. Oh, and it looks like Bella still has an attitude. But what's new? Is there even really any point in trying to discipline her? Maybe we should send her to Sixum. All of the food and drinks arrived. Kimmy astonished by her plate. This was the best meal she's ever had. This poor, poor impoverished child, Gwyneth thought. Nothing tasted better than spending just Joseph's money on overpriced food. Looks like Rosalie didn't really care for her caviar and smoked salmon canapes. But she sucked down that dry martini with three blue cheese olives with no problem. And all little Bella could think about was Kendra. 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 She fucked up. She fucked up bad. And she knew it. Kendra may have been horrible to her growing up. But she truly didn't deserve that comment Bella made. Rosalie had no idea what the hell was going on with her sister. But it didn't matter right now because Gwyneth asked if she could talk to her for a few minutes in private. And that's when she dropped the bomb. Her and Tanisha were romantically involved for quite some time now and have decided to get married this upcoming weekend. Holy shit, what? Rosalie felt so naive never connecting the dots now that she thought about it. Tanisha seemed way closer to Gwyneth and the whole family than just a good family friend. Well, she was happy for her mommy. She deserved to feel true love after everything Joseph had put her through. How fun it would be to have Tanisha as her stepmom. Gwyneth thought it was so funny how the both of them were engaged at the same time. Who would have thought? Oh, that's right. Rosalie was in fact engaged too. And now, the anxiety was back. Is this sitch venting to the chefs in the restaurant? The whole family got back home. Rosalie and Kimmy staying up late for some girl talk, mainly about Finley again. It was honestly so nice to not think about him for a few days. She loved him and she missed him dearly. But whenever she sees his face now, all she hears is wedding bells. How is she gonna get out of this? Kimmy was sympathetic with Rosalie. She certainly had a lot on her plate, but whether she wanted to hear it or not, she was digging herself 
in deeper. Second term will be here before she knows it. And she has got to break it off before then. They will figure it out together, she promised. But for right now, she needs some stress relief. She told Rosalie to go to bed and stop thinking about it. And she agreed. While Rosalie slept, Kimmy helped herself to Rosalie's computer, looking for things for the two of them to do tomorrow to help Rosalie get her mind off things. And that's when she stumbled upon something that caught her eye before the photo on Rosalie's desk did. That must be her dad, she thought. Damn, he must have really fucked her up. Afterwards, she decided she was going to sleep. She, along with Rosalie, would need their energy because tomorrow night, they were going to a rave happening a few towns over.